let's uh, let's start constructing the actual curvature here. So um, looking at this image, what you can see is that it kind of art it arcs its way toward the center point. And I'm not going to worry about this funky sculptural thing in the center. I'm just going to do the main structural armature. Um, so let's map these two arches going across. And there are kind of a few ways that we can do this. I'm thinking through different ways that I want to eliminate redundancies. So I could um, draw a line from each of my corner points to the center point. Then I can find the midpoints. Then I can raise the midpoints. And then I can create an arc that goes through all three of those points. Start point, raised center point, and then end point being in the center. That's an option. Um, I could um, actually that's the only real good way I think of doing it right now. I could draw it as a profile I could draw it as a profile on the side and then map it and align it to the two points. So basically, I don't know how you guys intend to do stuff like this, but it is possible to kind of draw a curvature profile here and then map it and orient it to those, you know, those particular items. I think what I'm going to do is just go with my first inclination here because it seems really simple, right? Um, unless any of you have developed any ideas yet for it. Any thoughts? No? Okay. Well, then we're going with this. <clears throat> so the easy part about this option is that mapping the line and finding the center point is actually really easy. And that's because the four vertices on all four corners are already sort of predefined and they're right there. So um, I will uh, go to the curve tab and primitive panel and let's just draw a line. And we're just going to draw a line from, and that's important, I'm saying from the end points to the, mid, the midpoint. And that'll come uh, into play later, the from and to. But the midpoint is right here, so we plug that in, and you can see that we've developed lines. And those lines are not on the surface itself, and that's okay, because we're going to stretch it upward anyway. So it, it won't be a conflict. So then from those lines, we have to find the midpoint and then move the midpoint. <clears throat> So, um, what am I doing? Oh yeah, divide. So uh, what we should do is divide that curve, and we'll plug the line in, and then change the number of subdivisions to two. I'm just going to use another panel. And then from this list, we will have to um, select the midpoints only in order to be modified. So uh, list item is our tool. List item. Plug the points in. One, two, three. Yeah, OK. So we're going to do a slider from 0 to 2. Or if you already know it's going to be a, a, a static number of 1. In fact, I do know it's going to be 1. So I'm just going to copy this panel over, make it index item 1. Oops. Just select it to make sure that those are your selected objects. And then um, uh, so from this, we have the uh, opportunity to just kind of move it. But before we do so, I want you to think about how it's being moved. So the, the image, it, it, I mean, you can do it in a very simple way. I'm not sure exactly um, what way you intend to do it right now. But if, I mean, we're not going to get into learning structures here. But I want you to be aware of the fact that this is predominantly a flat surface. Ours has a little bit of a bow to it. And so if you bow the surface of it, then the structure essentially bows as well. But the forces are still going in the z direction. 
So you as designers will have to figure out whether or not you want your, um, the if you want the, I guess you call it the center line of the parabola, right? You would call it the center line of the parabola for the curve if you want that to be along the z-axis or if you want it to be aligned to the surface of the bridge, right? So um, I'm not a structural engineer. Adam could probably speak more to this than me, but my first inclination is that you would want your, um, the center line of your parabola to be, or the center line of your arc um, to be aligned with the z-axis, basically aligned with the forces in your bridge. That makes sense or your main forces anyway, your gravity forces. So anyway, um, so that basically means that instead of, see how these are kind of like slightly tilted? Instead of moving it out perpendicular to that line, which would make it a, yeah, so that would just, you know, make a straight curve going that way, but it would kind of lean out a little bit. Um, mine are just going to go straight up. And so what you're going to see is that the arc actually will have a slight bias toward the center. In fact, it might not even be it might not even be discernible. So it's whether or not you want it symmetrical, or if you want it to be you know aligned with the gravitational force. <clears throat> so let me just move these up in the z direction. So again, we're dealing with structures now. We're dealing with real forces. It's okay to use unit z here. Um, so I'm going to move, transform Euclidean, and move. The geometry in the z direction under vector vector unit z and the geometry is going to be these four points it's going to be in the z direction and i will define how far it goes with a slider so zero less than oh approximately how tall is that thing I only made my bridge like one lane wide on either side. So 30 feet wide, we'll make it 60 feet tall. Yeah, probably something like that. So let's just do a slider from 0 to 100. Won't hurt to slide it back and forth. And bump it up to something, yeah, 100 feet is going to be way too tall for this proportion. So I was thinking something more along like 60, and 60 might even be too tall. So just put it around like 45, 50-ish for now, and in fact that might even come down. Something like that. I'll tell you what, the 30, the 30 foot height here looks a lot taller than it does wide, doesn't it? Anyway, maybe not. All right, so this is what I'm going with for now. So um, you've seen this before. We did some three-point arcs um, in the past. Uh, I want to think a little bit more closely about what kind of arc we're doing. Um, if we go to curve and uh, primitive, you'll see the arc three-point here. I want you to be aware that this particular arc is going to be a circular arc with one radius the entire way around. If you want to do something that's a little bit more parabolic, then you would want to use um, an interpolate curve or a NURBS curve. Okay, so the NURBS curve is what we generated down here. Uh, where's my edge? So that basically means if I uh, pull this up, the edge goes with it. Um, but it's not exactly aligned with the points itself. Whoops. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not exactly sure which one I'm going to want yet, but the good thing is they're going to just request a list of points anyway. So I'm going to do the catenary curve. That's the term I was thinking, not parabolic, catenary. I need to go back to math class. Um, anyway, so I'm going to just start with an interpolate curve. So, um, and this is one... Just to give you an example of like what it's like to learn the software as you're using the software, this is one that I don't really use very often. So I'm, I'm reading through the input values to learn what it is I need to give it. So the vertices, right? So this means it's the interpolation points. My guess is, knowing the way this, this program functions, is that they have to be in order, 
right? So it probably wants to go first point, second point, third point. Um, the curve degree is a measure of how, um, I think it's the tolerance of, of how close it actually engages that particular um, point. So a degree of one actually creates a polyline and a, a degree of two will make it sort of more, um, it'll have a smaller radius to the actual point of the curve. And then, uh, you know, the larger the degree, the smoother the curve actually is across the, the overall thing. And then a uh, periodic curve will uh, attempt to close it. And then the knot style, I actually have no idea what knot style does, but I don't think we're going to need it. So, um, so let's uh, take a look at actually setting up the points, and then we'll deal with the other, the other settings later. Um, so the first thing I have here, I have my midpoints, and then I have um, my four corner points, which are right here. So these are my four corner points. So we're going to have to actually break this out so that the four corner points become my point number one, uh, sorry, uh, index item zero. My middle points are going to be index item uh, one, and then my midpoint is going to have to be multiplied and grafted four times to be, or it doesn't have to be grafted actually, um, to be uh, index item two. So that's essentially, uh, um, go to param, no, sorry, uh, set tree, not stream filter, hang on a moment, now I'm forgetting which one it's supposed to be, we're not merging, we are thought it was uh, stream gate put stream no new well anyway um hang on i i'm just blanking right now okay sorry so um yeah i just had to recall exactly what the tool was that I was supposed to be using here in order to, so the problem I was having is that uh, this item only has one, right? So we have only one center point that had, needs to essentially be repeated three times. So um, the way that I tend to want to think through this stuff, and some, you guys just saw it, but for the sake of the video, um, I start with essentially my my things that I need to, to you know blend together into a singular list. Um, so the first one is going to be the four vertices here. So that's going to be these. And I'll just kind of move it out here to the edge. And I'll grab another point param, and I'll plug it into the four raised midpoints. That's these. And then I'll plug in um, another point param to my one midpoint. And so what, what we need to do, kind of ignoring everything else right now, let's just look at these. I have a list of points that's flattened. I have a list of points that's grafted. And I have a list of points that only happens to have one item. And I need to get them all to speak to each other so that the first item of this list uh, connects to the first item of this list connects to the, um, this item. Right, and that has to. This item has to be replicated four times for each list. So, um, the tool that you need is called Weave. Weave is found under Set and List, and it's right here called Weave. And the way that it works, um, you see here, it says a Weave Pattern of Input Indices. So what that's saying is that when I feed data into Stream Zero, that data gets read as um, an input indice of, or uh, indice, uh, an input index of zero. So essentially what it's gonna do is um, I'm saying I want my list to look like this. I'm gonna make a list that has index item zero that pulls from stream gate zero. And then I'm gonna make an index item one 
that pulls from stream gate one. And then I'm going to make an index item two that pulls from stream gate two, which we don't have yet. Um, and I'm going to add it on. So I right click this and I need to make sure that this reads as a list. So turn it off of multi-line data. This is essentially our pattern. That's the P input. So it says a weave pattern of input indices. Right now it's oscillating between zero and one, but we have three inputs that we want to uh, give it. So we're gonna have a zero, a one, and if you zoom in really, really close, you can add a new parameter for value of two. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, maybe, I don't know. All right, so, um, so what I'm going to do here is plug it in and, and just see what the list looks like. So I'm going to plug in my pattern. I'm going to plug in index item 0, 1, and then 2. And make sure that you plug in your end points first, then your midpoints raised, and then your center point at the bottom. And then put a panel on the end and take a look at what it looks like. So what you'll notice is that it doesn't really come out in groups of three. And that's because of the discrepancy between our lists. So we have, um, we have a list of four items here that are flattened. We have uh, four items that are grafted here. So first and foremost, you can see those four items that are flattened are 000, 150, 000, 150, 30, 0, and then 0, 30, 0. So you can look over here and see where they exist, and it happens to be 000 right here, and then 150, 0, 150, 30, and then 0, 30, 0. And so we've got this one right here, which is a midpoint, and then we have an endpoint. So the, the good thing is that the midpoint and endpoint, midpoint, endpoint, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, uh, raised midpoint and then surface midpoint. And then raised midpoint, surface midpoint, raised midpoint, surface midpoint. So those are repeating properly, but they're not grouping with the other four items properly. The other four items exist in all of the patterns. So um, first, you can kind of tell that the grafted situation is working. The flattened situation is not. So graft your first input, and here you'll see that it takes those items. And so you've got your uh, 0, 0, 0 now, and then your 150, 0, 0, and then your 150, 30, 0, and then your 0, 30, 0. How confused did I make you with that explanation? A little bit. OK. I could go through it again. Um, I'm not in the video, but I'll go through it again if necessary. So anyway. Um, Basically, this means that this is working properly. And um, I'm going to close the book on this thought real fast. Um, I'll try to do it really fast before I move on. And just plug this into your vertices. And there you can see that the arc is being produced. So any general questions before I stop the video and kind of go through to make sure that you thoroughly understand what just happened?